call this meeting to order. Would you please all rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, we begin with open forum. Um, according to board policy 203, we allow 15 minutes um, set aside for citizen input. And to my knowledge, there's no one that wants to address the board this evening. Um, so I'll move on to the consent agenda. Um, the consent agenda includes items that are routine in nature and will be enacted on one motion. Um, I feel like this is out of order. Um, there's nothing on my document that says to um, the hard copy anyway to approve the agenda. Oh. And um, a roll call. Yeah. So I'll go back to roll call. <laughs> <laughs> um, everyone is here this evening with the exception of Melissa Anger. Um, and then I take a motion for yes. the agenda, correct? Yes. Um, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So made. By Stacy, second. Second. By Enrique. Any comments or questions? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries 6-0. OK, now on our consent agenda. <laughs> These are items that are routine in nature and will be enacted with one motion with no separate discussion. Included on the consent agenda are the financials, the check wire transfer disbursement summaries for July and August, the wire transfer EFT and ACH banking activity for July and August, bank reconciliation statements for June and July, building bond investment reports, uh, monthly wire detail for July and August, monthly health dental wire detail for July and August, monthly detail, monthly check detail for July and August, the monthly ACH detail for July and August, approval of school board minutes um, from the regular school board meeting on August 12th and the board study session on August 26th. Personnel items, um, the resignations as listed, candidates for employment, um, and leaves of absence. Do I have a motion to accept the consent agenda? So made. By Mary, second? Second. By Michael, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries 6-0. Um, now we'll move on to the resolution um, for the acceptance of gifts. Um, we have gifts um, donated to the district from Charities Aid Foundation, Fairview Ridges staff, um, Weiss Masonry, Prior Lake Lions Club, uh, Miss Sazama 3M, Wells Fargo uh, Matching, and Boy Scout Troop 226. Do I have a motion to accept the donation of gifts? So moved. moved. By Jonathan, second by Stacy. Um, any comments or questions? Okay, I think that's a roll call vote. Michael? Aye. Jonathan. Aye. 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 All right, that passes 6 0. Um, now we're moving on to uh, Laker Pride. We have a little bit of a change in the program, which Dr. Stalo will explain. Thank you very much. Good evening, folks. Um, our Music Fest partners uh, asked if they could reschedule uh, to next month. They had some things come up and were unable to make it, uh, kind of a, a, lo a late change. Um, and I'm really glad because it gives me the opportunity mm. um, to do a Laker Pride and a recognition of something that um, I've wanted to be able to do more publicly than I've done in the past. Uh, with the opening of unbelievable learning spaces and social spaces across our district, it has taken a whole lot of work from a whole lot of people. Um, all of our staff have been incredibly collaborative and done some heavy lifting in order to, um, to complete the work that needed to get done for us to start school and open up uh, all of our buildings and serve lunch and do all those things on time. So this evening, I would like to just give uh, a special thank you and recognition to Jim Delwo our uh, Director of Operations, Transportation, uh, and to Assistant Director Maureen Mullen. And on behalf of their staff as well, um, I would like to just give a kudos and some recognition. Um, the work that they have done along with our Child Nutritious Services staff and staff across the district, uh, the weekends that they've had to work over the summer, especially in the last month, long days, early mornings, late nights. Um, I just want you to know how much we appreciate, how much we notice, 
and how grateful I am for your true service uh, and servant leadership. Um, never has there been anything but a can-do attitude from you and your staff, and it is greatly appreciated. Thank you. So please come on up and just be recognized. Um, about our staff, our maintenance staff, on our custodial staff who have put in the hard, hard work of doing it. So they're they're amazingly talented, amazingly dedicated people. So they're the ones who did the work. Excellent. Well, thank you for accepting this on their behalf. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to personnel items. Um, Jim? I have one. Uh, good evening. Uh, there is one. There is a, uh, I am requesting approval of the following revised job description. Um, the American Indian Education Coordinator, we have hired a new one, and before we did that, we wanted to make sure that the responsibilities were uh, well laid out. Uh, they, uh, looking at the old job description, it was um, uh, not very long, and I think what they did is flushed out the responsibilities to make them clear within the job description. So it's just a matter of updating the job description. Okay, do I have a motion to approve the job description for the American Indian Education Coordinator? So made. By Mary, second? Second. By Enrique. Any comments or discussion? Um, I have one question. Um, so we already have someone in this position, correct? Correct. Um, just, just and um, does this change anything about, I mean, I know you tried to explain that they're doing more and all that. Is this an exact replica of their job description now, or is this change what their duties are, anything like that going forward? Actually, this is a new person in the position. Okay. So it, it, there wasn't a current person, and we changed the job description. That's there what was I was a trying break, to qualify. There was a break, right? Okay. So. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries 6-0. Thank you. Move on to unfinished business, um, facilities planning and construction update. Uh, good evening, Chair Shimmick, um, school board, Dr. Stalo. We'd like to go over a few of the updates on uh, construction, a very brief update. Uh, Maureen, I'll let you uh, start. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I can get us going here. Um, how many directors does it take to? <laughs> Got it. Next one up. Okay. Mm -hmm. One. Oh, one. All right. <laughs> awesome. So um, just kind of an update, a very brief overview, um, and thanks to Chelsea for putting this together for us tonight. Um, some slides showing the interiors of some of the schools on Hidden Oaks. This first um, slide shows you up in the upper left-hand corner one of the pod spaces. Just a beautiful light field. You can't see it um, out the windows in the photo, but you can just see the beautiful um, green spaces at the end of those hallways you look out. Uh, the picture to the right of that is the Bridges ALC. Um, Two. Keep talking. Keep talking? All righty. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, the Bridges ALC, that's the um, uh, makerspace, um, uh, con polished concrete floor, um, new furniture, just a really lovely space. Again, really light-filled, beautiful space. Down in the lower left-hand corner, um, our proud uh, uh, Dave Brown in front of his new building, the ALC, just a gorgeous, gorgeous space. And it, the vibe in there is really wonderful. Um, the picture in the middle also in the comments of, um, oh, excuse me, no, it's somewhere, this middle photo here is Jeffers Pond in the new um, kindergarten wing, this is in the resource area, the center wing, um, a door to each side um, goes into each of the new kindergarten spaces. And on the right hand side, um, the interior of one of the new kindergarten classrooms at Redtail Ridge, um, very similar to the um, set up and colors of Jeffers Pond. So two just lovely, lovely spaces. All of these are just really beautiful spaces. Um, 
Twin Oaks, upper left, is the um, new cafeteria on the serving area, um, beautiful colors, lovely space. Um, to the right of that is the um, cafeteria at Twin Oaks, just kind of right around the corner next to the auditorium. Um, amazing. Again, all of these spaces are just light-filled and, and really lovely. Uh, lower left corner, Hidden Oaks um, lunchroom. Um, you can see on the uh, lower right-hand corner uh, the windows out back, which, again, um, showing the green spaces um, uh, out behind the building, which is just, uh, just beautiful. Um, a really wonderful um, addition to Hidden Oaks. It doesn't look so great in this photo, but it, now that it's complete, it looks much better. The parking lot, and the big feature on this is that it separates the bus traffic from the parent drop-off traffic. So not only do we have um, many um, uh, additional parking spaces, we have a much longer queuing line, so we get parents off the Fish Point Road, um, and the traffic is so much smoother. The buses in and out are much quicker, more Correct. efficient, and much safer as well. So this was a really... An, a, Great addition, even though it's not very glamorous, but a great addition to the building. Um, Hamilton Ridge flying along. Again, there's nobody in the building. There's no activities. <laughs> so it's, it, there's not, not any, anything going on on the site except building and a lot of building. Um, clipping right along out of the ground, as you can see, the um, uh, elevator towers going up, a lot of steel um, up already on the site. So it's pretty exciting how fast that is moving already. Um, Westwood Edgewood. Um, Another beautiful light-filled space, um, upper left-hand corner is the cafeteria looking out those windows, uh, looking at the playground. The right, uh, upper right photo is in the um, uh, resource area. Uh, Kids Co. uses this space in the morning, great space for them. Um, lower left, looking from the windows back at the cafeteria. Uh, the orange panels up on top are sound panels, um, and the, uh, the, there's also some acoustic benefit to the um, clouds that hold the lights in the ceiling. Um, and the lower right-hand corner is that big bank of windows looking out at the playground. Um, it's really just a lovely addition for those buildings. And that is a very brief <coughs> overview. So if I could just add a little bit. So when we were in design many months ago, light was a key feature to all of these. And um, if you can get no sights, it's really paid off. The design team worked very hard on making sure that the spaces were light-filled. And as you can see, they're beautiful. It's mm -hmm. really has made a difference in those spaces. Um, high school. Um, and high school, again, we don't have any pictures for high school, but that's um, uh, area tech ed is open, not quite finished. Um, and the other towers are coming along <clears throat> and we're starting to move clockwise around the building to get uh, you know, that whole project completed by next year. Uh, we have some very serious challenges with that parking lot. Uh, the combination of wet weather and poor soils is putting us way behind, and we are uh, working through some options to speed that process up. <clears throat> can, can, Stacy, uh, I just know there's <coughs> concern about the parking lot at the mm -hmm. high school. Um, so as far as, I know it's been set up like three times already to try to get paved, and mm -hmm. it's rained every time. Yep. So, I mean, I think just publicly, I mean, obviously you've been working on it, but just to kind of talk a little bit about, you know, is there, you know, what we can do like long term? Is it something that we feel is going to get done before November? I mean, I know you can't plan the weather, but uh, I would hope it's done before November. Okay. Um, if not, I'll probably be looking for a new job. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not promising either one of those things, but uh, <laughs> we are uh, we are struggling to get that done, and it's a lot of thought. We got it back with engineers now. Uh, the soils are really bad on that site, yeah. and we knew that all along. Um, but the, uh, the rain has really, really complicated this. And again, this week we're going to have a month's worth of rain in a week. It takes a long time this time of year for that to dry up. Like weeks? Is that what um, I, I can't even speculate. <laughs> okay. I mean, All right. Crystal ball. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> so uh, we're, we're working very hard to get that corrected. Mary? Um, Jim, what are the options to deal with the high water table and the underwater, the underground stuff with the water flow and... Um, is there, uh, what options are you actually looking at? I, it, it's been a problem since the school site was chosen, correct. you know, correct. 20 year, uh, 16 years ago or whatever, so. Well, some of the options we're pricing right now is extra gravel uh, uh, as a, um, a bed for the uh, asphalt. We're looking at a drying agent to kind of help dry that site up. And uh, of course it all costs money and uh, we're waiting on pricing and a recommendation from our engineer. 
Okay. Is there any concern about the stability of the ground itself with, with the increased moisture under there with, you know, obviously maintenance of it as well as cracking? Yeah, there, are, and, there are concerns, yeah. Uh, are we, can we do anything to deal with that? I mean, there's only so much drying agent you can put in there over time. Right. Um, well, I guess what we could do is tear out a whole bunch of soil and put in some new, but that's a, that's a huge cost and time. Okay. So we're battling time and uh, we're, we're really struggling with that. Okay. Michael? I'd just like to make a quick comment too. Um, many of us went on the construction tour a few days before school opened. And it looked fabulous then, but we were all kind of holding our breath. <laughs> Us too. <laughs> and um, I just want to say I was on site at a lot of the buildings on um, first day of school, uh, both at the Bridges and High School and several elementaries. And it just reminded me about why we do the work we do. And as a special thanks to you and your staff, to see the students walk into those spaces and light up. So I will tell you, at that Westwood cafeteria, I sat down by kids eating, and they ex had ownership of that space on day one. And they couldn't stop telling me how they could see almost the whole world outside their windows. Oh, so and they sweet. even told me the pizza tasted better in that cafeteria than last year. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. And to be in Bridges as students walked in for the first time, talk about you know, demonstrating in a very tangible way that you matter in our district, it was a really powerful experience. I don't know how it went from how it looked a few days before school opened to how it looked when we were in there. Um, it was not only your work, we spoke to one of the custodians and, and she you could see how personally she took having these spaces ready for our students and to the point of having you know emotional eyes. So just on behalf of all of us, thank you. And I can't tell you what a joy it was to see and be among students and remember this is why we did what we did, the referendum and, and um, all of your efforts and all of the voting and the finance and everything else. So just extra thanks. And if I could add, uh, Child Nutrition really stepped yes. up. Yes, I'm sorry, I have no, that on my I, list yeah, Not to correct you, but they, uh, they mm -hmm. were working alongside us on Labor Day weekend mm -hmm. and early and late hours and they really, really um, uh, stepped up. Yeah, and I saw Emily Malone on day one over at Westwood making sure everyone could figure out the new process because it's very different from what they had. And I think she was there a few days maybe. But, um, yeah, thank you for calling that out too. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to new business. Um, back to school report. Excellent. We're going to provide you this evening a comprehensive uh, report of uh, some things that happened uh, with multiple uh, multiple departments in order to get ready for the year. So thanks, Christy, for helping me drive. Uh, the next slide. Um, we're going to talk just a little bit about the themes, some of our strategic work, but then really get into from teaching and learning to our business office to some transportation and staffing updates from HR. Just give you a flavor of um, how everything went now that we finally opened school to all students. So we do have much to celebrate in Prior Lake Savage Area Schools, and our theme this year is We Are PLSIS, Relationship Matters. Uh, what we are doing with that theme is we are ensuring that we remind ourselves and every single one of our staff and our community members and parents and board members and students that we're all in this together. And in order to ensure that that mission comes to life for all of our kids, um, we need to make sure that we remain in relationship with each other to help each other um, achieve their full potential. The other piece of this theme that's important is, um, that's okay, Christy, go ahead, is that as you look at our strategic plan, you note our strategic directions. Um, and that is the priority work, the district goals that our board approved uh, that we do. And then underneath that, we have a whole lot of other work that is integrated as well. So part of our theme is also the relationship and the integration of that work. Um, I love this time of year when staff come together. So I've just got a couple slides here. Um, again, paying tribute to our custodial maintenance staff as they came together. Uh, teaching and learning did a ton of work that Jeff will speak to more before the start of the year. Multiple groups that got together to really dig into data and um, determine best, uh, best ways to help kids learn. And then always welcoming the new teachers is a joy. 
Um, also, a reminder that during the summer, and I know we got a report from um, uh, Community Ed uh, and some of our summer programming, but I uh, just wanted to remind us that relationships matter as we had examples here of our music staff uh, from the high school who presented at a conference. Um, so they're still teaching and learning from their peers throughout the summer and some students uh, uh, who are in the honor choir who also got a chance to participate and learn as well. Um, moving on, just a, a reminder again, as staff come together at the beginning of the year, coaches and advisors um, really spent some time remembering their purpose and why they coach, um, building relationships with students beyond wins and losses. And again, that shout out to our Child Nutrition Services staff. You know, the, the pizza was really good, I have to admit. I also had some of the pizza on that first day that was served at Westwood. And it was really cool, it was a new recipe that um, the Child Nutrition Service staff tried out with Kids Company students over the summer to get their feedback on it and served it to students the first day. Um, but just the, the work that they've done, not only in the kitchen and, and doing the actual food, serving it with love, but as we've already said, the, the work that they had to do to get their kitchens ready was just amazing. Um, one of the best traditions that I think we have across our, our school district is that picture on the left. Uh, the first day when our Prior Lake High School staff come back to school, um, our students uh, greet them. And I, um, I had a chance this year to walk through that. And just the true, genuine joy and clapping and cheers for staff and teachers as they were coming in um, really, I think, talks to and speaks to the power of relationships. Again, Jeff will speak to the um, building instructional leadership teamwork and then also wanted um, all groups come together. Our student health services came together as well to continue to look at their processes to how to serve students really well. And the other piece, as I talked about, the integration of our priority work is, is so important. So I'm just going to um, actually uh, have some of our, our team um, highlight some of the work aligned to our priority work and strategic directions. Um, again, our improvement theory is here's the work that falls under our strategic directions. If we continue to implement and do uh, the work aligned to those best practices as well, we will continue to achieve our goals for um, increased student achievement, uh, increased student engagement, and operational, ec op operational excellence. Um, we are doing some things really well, and we certainly know that we have ways um, to go in, in many areas as well. Um, I shared at my last superintendent's report uh, that Prior Lake Savage Area Schools was named by Nietzsche as one of the top districts in the state. Um, and again, there's multiple ways that school districts are ranked, and this is one of them, and we certainly want to um, be able to highlight and tell our story well. Um, I think the, the call out, and again, a lot of this is, is uh, perception data from um, parents and students, as well as other factors that are involved in these rankings. But I think that number three ranking for our teachers is, is really important. And again, we've certainly got more work to do, um, but uh, I think this highlights the fact that our stakeholders think we're doing some things very well also. So with that, I'm going to uh, ask Assistant Superintendent Jeff Holmberg to talk a little bit about the work under Strategic Direction 1. Yes, good evening, Chair Shemek, members of the board, Dr. Salo. I'm going to just uh, kind of step in here for a little bit, take the next couple of slides. Um, I'm going to be highlighting just some of the things that we've been doing over the summer um, that really was the foundation has been laid over the last several years. But, you know, recalling all at the end of the year, all of the strategic direction and PDSA things, you know, that we shared with the board in the spring, a lot of work or a lot of ground or foundation for this year uh, was completed over June, July, and August. So again, strategic direction one, increasing measurable student learning and reduce achievement gaps which would provide equitable student opportunities through personalized learning and student engagement. And so I'm just highlighting some of the things. Uh, Dr. Stalo shared a lot of uh, <coughs> pictures uh, of a lot of groups, and we did. We had a lot of groups of, of staff in this summer uh, representative of, um, of every building in the district, um, working through personalized learning, um, new staff workshop, the built retreat, MTSS workshop. Um, I guess I, I'm going to make a public kind of announcement here too is that the work of the building principals and assistant principals in working with their teams on really setting the foundation was absolutely key. It always is key and I don't think it's recognized enough. Um, but really, from a teaching and learning standpoint, our partners with the principals and staff, it really is, 
it takes all of those groups together, working together, leading together in order to, you know, look at goals, look at data, talk about social emotional learning, looking at the results from the, the carry audit uh, from the MTSS and just kind of going through those things. Um, new staff workshop, as, as Dr. Stalo mentioned, it's a great way to introduce new staff to the district, thank them for choosing us, um, and really onboard them into the school district. And while there's a teaching and learning component around curriculum and assessment and, you know, helping them to really set things up for what the student experience will be and what we expect the curriculum outcomes to be and the experiences that they'll have in Prior Lake Savage area schools, the other side of that partnership is building administrators, working with, admin working with new staff as well, um, onboarding, supporting from the day-to-day -day types of things. Um, fall workshop, as you know, uh, was split this year due to construction. Um, it really, I, I would say having, for the, from the teaching and learning standpoint, having eight to nine days of fall workshop was a little tiring um, from our <laughs> perspective, uh, but it also was a really great opportunity that first week to really dive in uh, with the high school staff, ALC staff, MINCAP staff, and be really specific around um, uh, what was unique to the high school, how we needed to support the high school. Uh, we had Dr. Shiraki Holly in as a, as a presenter. I know a couple board members attended that session. Um, we, unfortunately, due to his schedule, we couldn't have him the second week with our E through eight staff, but you know, we'll look for another time where we can bring in uh, his presentation on academic vocabulary in that setting. And again, um, the second week once high school was started, uh, working with uh, pre-K, elementary and uh, middle school staff again being able to really be uh, personalized with our approach to teaching and learning and fall workshop and build on our personalized learning focus this year um, the final comment that i'll that i'll mention is we asked each staff member to do a learning profile which again helped us to understand you know really their interests how they like to learn how they like to collaborate or work together how they like to receive feedback and so from a teaching and learning perspective, with peer coaches, curriculum adoption or curriculum work, our job is support, encouragement, bringing resources to the table and understanding who we're working with and how we're working with them in individually or in small groups. We wanna be able to match where they can really hit their stride to receive that information. Um, likewise, we wanna have staff turn that around and have students do a learner profile in very much the same way to get a better understanding of their students as learners, as individuals, um, so that how they can connect with the content, connect with the teacher, and have a learning environment that they can excel in and build those deeper connections. So uh, this is a screenshot from a personalized learning. I know back in March, March 25th uh, work session, we had a pretty deep dive into our personalized learning. And so again, this was the ability uh, during fall workshop to go through the Laker Learning Compass with all staff members, have them do that uh, staff learning profile, and then ultimately this will be our key work this year is personalized learning and bringing and connecting um, the work with educational excellence and equity, MTSS, into that personalized experience. Um, I'll set the stage a little bit at your next work session. Uh, September 23rd, we'll be going over world's best workforce requirements, and we'll also delve deeper into personalized learning, some of the other strategic directions, reimagine Minnesota, um, how, to, how we're connecting this together and building intentional connections with the work this year um, for our stakeholders. Thanks, Jeff, very much, and thanks for all the leadership of, of you and your team. Um, certainly, in order to advance student achievement and the learner experience, we need to be very intentional with the relationship between our human, financial, and physical resources. Um, as you heard Jeff and Maureen talk about, uh, we've spent the last four years really getting ready and preparing for the construction and the work that has been completed, um, and we heard from them, and those spaces are beautiful. Julie is now going to, I think, advance twice and she will give us a little bit of an enrollment update. Um, good evening, board members, um, Dr. Stallo. Um, this evening we're talking a little bit about where we've um, preliminarily um, looking for our enrollment for this year. 
Um, as you can see, our elementary enrollment is at 38.54, our middle school is at 21.48, and our high school enrollment is at 27.75, and we have 83 students enrolled right now at our Bridges ALC for a total enrollment of 8,860 students. Um, last year, we ended the year at our, our actual ADMs that have been reported for last year, 8,748. So we're up 112 students over last year. As you know, as we projected, um, predicted 240 additional students for our budget process. Um, so we didn't quite meet our goal. This is the first time and since I've been here in the district for 10 years that um, we've not met that. And so we're looking into um, what our options are. We'll be reviewing the budget process. We always bring a final budget in December for you to review and approve. And so we'll be going through that and um, giving you some information over the next several months, especially after we get final October 1st um, student counts. And so we'll review that and bring back forth um, those amended budgets for you to approve. Thank you, Julie. And I think, uh, Jim, you're back up, or you and Maureen are back up for just a transportation. I know you've already provided some construction, but we just wanted to hear a little bit of a transportation update. Okay, great. Thank you. Hello again. Um, <laughs> so the Twin Oaks, um, Hidden Oaks new uh, bus entry has been a huge add for us. It's uh, pulled a lot of congestion off of Fish Point. We've not eliminated the congestion, but we, uh, we've made a definite safety improvement. So thank you for that project. Uh, we totally are, um, total bus assignments, that's not riders, but we're at 85.25, um, including Aspen and St. Michael's, 1140 um, uh, kids. We've added service to Aspen Academy this year um, it, um, as part of their right for transportation. And uh, we are beginning uh, uh, planning for boundary changes next year. So we're looking at that. I'm uh, trying to get an overview of that before we assign kids to stops next summer. Uh, the other challenge we're having that didn't make the slide is um, traffic. Uh, road construction right now, as far behind as we are, <laughs> they're as far behind too. And uh, when 13 got shut down, the, the bypass was on Franklin Trail, and uh, that's open now, hopefully for a while, but um, we're really struggling with uh, road conditions right now too. Thank you very much, Thank Jim. You. I think the next two slides are uh, just some of the construction update slides, and then I'll ask uh, Jim Quorum, Executive Director of HR, to share a little bit on staffing. Perfect. Yep. <laughs> um, just one slide here on staffing, um, just to give you sort of big picture where we're at. Um, I think um, Julie's office ha issued. Um, most recently about 1,650 W-2s, so that gives you an idea of the total people that we employ in some fashion, that's coaches, that's all kinds of things, right? But uh, we have about 1,200 regular employees uh, at this point. Um, this year, uh, we added 41 new teachers, uh, and of that, the board had approved, uh, in relation to that, I guess, the board approved 10.83 uh, uh, increase in FTEs and really if you look down at the bottom the what we used was 9.62 of the 10.83 um, and, and just to connect to what Julie talked about you know some of that you're anticipating that growth she's been on the mark for years so you're anticipating that growth over the summer as students start to come in so some of those hires were there some of them were um, ones that were in last year that you either approved as a temporary hire or a, <clears throat> a long-term sub kind of thing that we made permanent, right? Special ed, I think 2.3 out of that 3.1 were currently positions that we had at the end of the school year, but we made them permanent based upon student numbers. So it gives you the breakdown. Um, really, a, a chunk of that increase is two FTEs at the Spanish Immersion School, for fifth grade, and then the addition of a half-time dean and half-time social worker, so they look like a, a regular, just like any other elementary. They have the same services, they have the same uh, staffing ratios, that sort of thing. So that was a, a significant chunk of that uh, 10.83 FTE. Thanks, Jim. Yep. 
And just to finish off a few uh, highlights of the other strategic directions, um, strategic direction number one, or number four, I'm sorry, as you know, we have a long standing tradition um, of caring about the relationship with the environment. Um, and you can see on the next slide that uh, as a 2013 uh, Green Ribbon Sustainable District Award winner, we're uh, revitalizing <laughs> our uh, goals around recycling this year. And in each building, we're going to have some recycling goals. Um, the fifth strategic direction is that new one that came out of the community strategic planning process, uh, providing a safe, secure, and supportive environment that nurtures the social and emotional well-being of all learners. And the two pieces of this um, are the work around what, what are we going to be doing this year, what, what one of the, our priorities this year around this strategic direction is to really look at our current practices around social emotional learning, our supports, our curriculum, our resources, um, and to just see what programs we have, what we're doing, like uh, morning meeting, PBIS work across the district, um, second step advisory, how we engage students in instruction, Laker time, um, and we'll have a chance through that um, inter in internal review of our programming and resources and supports to take a look at where we're doing well and where we might have some gaps that will provide recommendations into um, where we're going into the future. And the second part of the strategic direction um, is our work, our continued work around ensuring that our, our schools are safe. And as board members heard at our study session um, in August, uh, we have had a lot of work that we've had a, a team doing around our standard reunification method. And you got a chance to hear about that and we'll continue to communicate as we we uh, deploy some of that awareness and training. And then finally, um, none of our work is possible without the engagement of our community, our stakeholders, our parents, staff, and students. And just reviewing, again, some of our um, annual stakeholder data, we know that uh, our relationship and our trust with our parents continues to be strong. And where there's places for us to grow, we're certainly working in those areas. Um, in the same regard, our students' uh, surveys continue to be strong, and we take a look at those places um, that we need to improve as well. One of those factors in terms of social emotional that we're really continuing to look at is um, making sure that students feel uh, safe and they have at least one adult that they connect to in the buildings. And then lastly, um, our staff continue through their work uh, to make Prior Lake Savage Area Schools such a special place um, and they do a whole lot of meaning meaningful work on behalf of our students. So we put it all together and we had a whole lot of preparation ultimately for the return of staff and then uh, got really excited about finally the return of students and as Jeff said um, you know it was it was interesting having two weeks of multiple first days but uh, it was kind of fun to be able to split that up and hear stories and see Twitter and go visit um, all of the different buildings so just great energy at the high school on that first day um, and then last Tuesday, we got a chance to welcome our middle school students. And um, again, the, the teachers and the kids were thrilled, not just with the new spaces, but also with the leg leg legacy spaces. Uh, and then welcoming students. Uh, again, if you recall, they have two days of assessment days, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday of last week, and then open with students on Thursday. So with that, um, you know, I have uh, done a whole lot of first day of schools in the past uh, 30 years in multiple roles of being an, educator, being an educator. And I'm not sure that I have ever had such a robust, I don't think there's ever been such a robust collaborative effort to get schools opened. And I don't think I've ever had such an emotional start. Um, echoing what Michael said, when I walked into Westwood Edgewood with students, um, it was pretty hard to hold back tears. Um, there has been a whole lot, and board members, I don't need to tell you this, <laughs> there has been a whole lot of hard work and for years um, to get to the place where these new spaces are open and students are enjoying them and teachers and staff are supporting kids. So um, thank you all, uh, board members, for all of your work in this and to my team, um, just unbelievable leadership and heavy lifting that's happened over the last two months. So thank you all. Thank you for the report. Um, it is a report only, but does anyone have any questions for any of the group that presented? Jonathan? I'll, I'll just toss in a, <coughs> a, a comment uh, on Julie's discussion about uh, enrollment stuff. One of the things we had talked about at study session um, <clears throat> is where we are in the interim. 
um, I had a conversation with one of my neighbors, and in my neighborhood alone, there are six families with kindergarten kids that have chosen to wait till next year to have their kids start school. So I think we, uh, I, I have a hunch we're going to see a little bit of a comeback on those numbers when we come around next year, because if that's one neighborhood, mm -hmm. how many of those are going on with people who are saying, we're going to be in a different building next year, I want to wait and send my kid to one school, or there'll be more room, we want to wait till next year. I just think that's worth noting. Well, thank you. Thank Very you. thorough report. Um, move on then to um, refinancing general obligation school building refunding bonds. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Big title. Um, good evening, board members. Um, Dr. Stallo. Um, Jeff Seeley is here from Ehlers & Associates. Um, Jeff is newer to our team here from Ehlers. Joel Sutter, is, uh, you usually see him here. He is um, slowing down and looking to retire soon. Mm -hmm. So um, he's still working on our team, but from afar. And so Jeff is here to help us um, kind of navigate through this. Um, this is the first opportunity that we've um, been able to have Ehlers here to discuss um, this opportunity for the school board um, to refinance the 2010 bonds. There are three years remaining on that bond and we're looking to refinance them for um, a lower price and save some money for our taxpayers for the remaining three years. Um, and after that, there's also an opportunity to discuss um, refinancing the lease for the 2014 um, Prior Lake High School edition. Um, remember that um, we utilize lease levy for that, and so that's a lease that we would be able to reduce the interest rate on and save our taxpayers some money in that area as well. And so um, the, we're bringing them forward because we do have the bond that's um, callable now, and also we would be able to get this completed before the final levy certification in December. And so I'll have I'll have Jeff. Um, present this information to you and I'm available for, for questions as well. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. And tonight we're going to talk about two uh, opportunities to save some money. And these are uh, when you refund bonds or a lease, um, the savings go directly back to the taxpayer. So it's a, a direct savings for on taxes, on property taxes for the taxpayers. So the first one I want to talk about is a refunding bond. And you have a resolution in front of you. This one will require uh, board action tonight. The After you <coughs> act on this resolution, I'll talk about the second opportunity, which you will not have to act on tonight. So uh, with that, um, you do have in your packets what we call our pre-sale report. So this is going to detail the refunding of uh, your particular bonds. I'm going to highlight some of the areas in here. So starting on page one, we're looking at uh, issuing about $11.6 million in what's called refunding bonds. And refunding, you can think of it as a refinancing. Um, same concept, different name. Uh, so you have three, as Julie mentioned, three maturities of your $21.7 million school building uh, bonds issued in 2010A. Now those refunded earlier bonds, so those were refunding bonds also. And when you sell bonds, you establish what's called a call date, and it's usually about eight years out from the date you sell it. And that call date allows you to refinance within 90 days of that call date. So we're approaching a call date on these of 2-1-2020. Uh, there is 11 million five hundred twenty five thousand dollars that's callable at this point uh, so as we looked at them your old bonds had um, interest rates of four percent and we're estimating about 1.1 to 1.2 percent on the new bonds uh, over a three-year period that amounts to um, savings of uh, about five hundred fifty four thousand dollars so a little over a half million dollars over three years so that's about 184 thousand dollars a year and again that's a direct tax reduction um, so the new bonds just over three years and um, we will instead of restructuring them instead uh, the the new bonds will mirror the structure of the old so we are not doing this for any structuring benefit we're doing it just purely for tax savings um, 
you do carry two ratings on the bonds, and the resolution will be addressing uh, part of that. One is the state credit enhancement program, which is where the state will actually step in should there be any default. And what that does is allows you to have greater security, lower risk for the investors, so it actually helps with the rates that you will receive. And then you'll be carrying your own rating. So we'll go through a process uh, with Julie on that and with a rating agency. We will do competitive bids, we'll take those. Um, that uh, will ensure that we get the best rate at that given time through competitive process. Uh, we are planning on doing a parameter resolution, which you have in front of you, and that uh, is a little different than our normal process, but your October meeting is on Columbus Day, which happens to be a day, uh, a federal holiday, the <coughs> markets are closed. So we'll actually be taking the bids the Thursday before, and the resolution that you pass tonight will have a parameter, and that'll allow uh, the superintendent or the director of business plus a board officer to authorize the award of the bonds, um, the parameter is a net present value savings of 3.3% or 400 and $400,000 of savings. Now, you'll notice that we're estimating more savings at this time. Uh, obviously, if rates stay low, you will receive closer to $550,000 savings. Uh, they can fluctuate between now and when we sell them. The thing with a current refunding is, um, once you hit the 2 one call date uh, and you haven't refunded, you're just going to lose money because you're paying a higher interest rate than what you have to pay. So uh, moving along here, uh, on page four we have the dates. We're doing the pre-sale tonight. You'll be uh, acting on the resolution. Uh, we will take the bids October 10th. Uh, it will be awarded at that time and then we'll bring it to the board for ratification on October 14th. The closing date is when the money is actually transferred, uh, so you'll get possession of it then and invest it at that point. Uh, the redemption date is when the old bonds are actually paid off and refunded. Uh, taking a look at uh, the following, the next, we're gonna go to page six. That is your existing payments. This is the old bond that we're refunding. You can see the three years uh, adds up to $11.5 million. You can see the 4% coupon or interest rates and the interest payments on each of those. Uh, the page seven shows what we anticipate for the new bonds. Uh, you can see the structure is relatively similar. And if you look at the true interest costs down below the TIC, it's just under 1.4%. And then page eight lays them side by side. So there is the new bonds, the old bonds, and the reduction to debt service of 554,000 is what we're estimating. That's present value to 536,000 or 4.4%. And then the, the next thing I want to put, uh, draw your attention to is this particular graph towards the end. This is the bond buyer index. It's an index that we use to um, uh, monitor the market. It's based on a 20 year bond. Your bonds are much shorter, so there'll be a lower interest rate. Uh, but this particular point, uh, way back in July of 16, was a low point for 55 years. And you can see over the last few months, rates have dropped and we're almost at the 55-year low again. So it's really um, fortunate, and the timing is very fortunate right now. So with that, you have a resolution in front of you to address this, and then after that, we'll talk about the lease. Okay, I'll read the resolution. <clears throat> Authorizing the approval of the sale of general obligation school building refunding bonds, series 2019A, co covenanting and obligating the district to be bound by and to use the provisions of Minnesota statute section 126 c Point five five to guarantee the payment of the principal and interest on the bonds. Um, do I have a motion to approve this resolution? So made. By Mary, second. 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 By Stacy. Um, does anyone have any other questions? Mary? Um, is the total uh, savings net of the refinance costs? Or yes. is that, okay. Yep. So All that includes 
the refinance? It does. All the refinance costs or costs of issuance have been built into that prior to coming up with that net savings okay. number. And mm. we're not extending the life of the bond. We're still we're going with the original time frame. We're simply refinancing in place, basically. That's correct, yes. Any other questions? Okay. Um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion carries 6 0. So it's, it's a roll call. Oh, it's a roll call. I'm sorry. <laughs> I knew that when I wrote it down. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Michael? Aye. Jonathan? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. That motion carries 6 0. All Thank right. Thank you. <clears throat> have uh, one and pass them along. Uh, this, this here is a lease refunding that we've been working on for a while because we had to negotiate some logistics and this one is uh, very promising at this point. So uh, you had a high school addition that you built in 2014. In 2013 you issued uh, a lease purchase agreement in order to pay for that and that gave you levy authority to um, um, generate the revenue necessary to make the payments. Uh, so at this point, we took a look at it to see if it made any sense to refund it because uh, as you can see from what's uh, coming around there, um, actually this, this particular document doesn't have it, but you have a 4.45% interest rate on that lease. Okay, and unlike bonds where every maturity has its own interest rate, this has a fixed interest rate throughout the 20 years. So 4.45. Right now, the rates are below 3% on comparable leases. So, and you saw that from that chart, how the, the rates have come down. So you have this with Capital One. One of the logistic problems that we had was Capital One has a buyout penalty and it was 3%, so it amounted to a couple hundred thousand dollars. So we approached them and, and talked to them about refunding it or refinancing it directly with them and asked them to waive the penalty. At first they said no because they have very real costs associated with that. So we went out and looked at alternatives and looked at certificates of participation Uh, we looked at uh, certificates of participation, which is a lease structured like a bond. Um, and uh, we saw that it would save about $900,000. Uh, with that, in, in which case, Capital One, we would pay off Capital One and they would be out of the picture at this point because we would actually bid that and sell it as a bond. Um, we told Capital One that that was our plan and they had some meetings and came back and said they would waive the penalty. So the 3% or 196000 they would waive that. If we did a lease directly with them, they offered us, uh, we have a verbal uh, commitment, if you will, on it right now, 2.75% waiving the penalty and that is what you see on this page with the, the highlighting. Uh, you can see the savings, the old, the old debt, the new debt. Um, so we're estimating about nine hundred twenty-one thousand dollars of savings um, over uh, through twenty thirty-four. So it's a longer refunding. Now that is over a ten percent present value savings. Which, if you get in double digits on a present value savings, you are doing very, very well. Um, so at this point, uh, what it what it does negotiating directly with Capital One, it also addressed some logistic issues because there is um, uh, a ground lease, and I won't get into the technicalities of it, that we had to work around with the COPs because the ownership was going to change hands. Well, with this, Capital One still maintains that, and it addressed all logistic issues too. So uh, the COPs, were, they were around 900,000, so this actually is going to be a better deal. Now you don't need to take board action on this. This is brought to you um, for uh, information purposes. And there's also a time frame we put together. With a lease, there's not an authorizing resolution like you acted on with the bonds. Uh, there's just the final resolution. And we're looking at, uh, of course, reviewing it tonight with you. Um, 
And then October 11th, we would actually take the bids, because again, October 14th, markets are closed. And the same night we would bring the bond results to you for ratification, we would bring the lease to you, the lease refunding to you for approval. Uh, and then uh, we would close on November 7th. The other thing with the COPs, we would have to wait till December to start the process. Uh, and rates could fluctuate. They could go up or down. But when they're really low, odds are if they move, they'll creep up some. We can do this one right away. Any questions on this? Anyone have any questions? Stacy? I just want to make sure I understand. So is this extending the lease that we currently have? It is not. not. It is not. Nope. Again, this is structured to match the original solely for um, tax savings. Okay. Well, I'm to reiterate that. Okay. Any other questions, Mary? Um, when you say you can act on it right away, are you talking about the October date or like tomorrow? We can start the process. Okay. The process will take us till October 14th and actually till November 7th when they actually get the money. But October 14th is when you will act on it. So we'd start the process right now, negotiating it. So if the rates went up, um, we had any catastrophic issue or the bond decided to uninvert um, <laughs> the bond market, um, do we have the option of keeping with our current one if there's no savings? Yes. So there's no, we're not making any obligation. We're just throwing sure it not. out there to sure try not. and take advantage of the current market. That's correct. <laughs> okay. Not only with the lease, but the bond that you approved until you actually award the sale, or in this case, it was a parameter. So you gave administration and a board officer the right to award that sale on October 10th until that date. You can always postpone it, cancel it, reschedule it, whatever you want. Okay. When October 10th, when we do sell, our, um, depending on what the rates are, are we going to get another amortization table here to just let us know what the, okay. Yes, yes. Uh, we'll, we'll produce all the, the schedules, bring it to you so you can see it on October 14th. Again, the, uh, uh, the bond has the parameter. The lease, you'll actually be approving at that meeting. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. All good news. <clears throat> yeah. Good Thanks, news. Jeff. You're welcome. Hey, moving on to the Columbus Day resolution, speaking of October 14th. <laughs> um, I'll read the resolution uh, relating to Columbus Day, October 14th. Be it resolved by the School Board of Independent School District 719, State of Minnesota, as follows. That Columbus Day, October 14th, 2019, not be considered a holiday. The regular meeting of the School Board of Independent School District um, number 719 can be held and business conducted as usual. Do I have a motion to adopt this resolution? So I mean, by Stacy. Second? Second. By Mary. Um, okay. This... I believe is a roll call. Um, so, Michael? Hi. Jonathan? Hi. Stacy? Aye. 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 <clears throat> that motion carries 6 0. Uh, the next one is a proclamation um, for Constitution Week. <clears throat> um, Constitution Week 2019, whereas September 17, 2019, marks the 232nd anniversary of the drafting of the Constitution of the United States of America. <clears throat> by the Constitutional Convention, and whereas it is fitting and proper to officially recognize this magnificent document and the anniversary of its creation, and whereas it is fitting and proper to officially recognize the patriotic celebrations which will commemorate the occasion, and now, therefore, we, the school board of Prior Lake Savage Area Schools, do hereby, pardon? Oh. do hereby proclaim September 16th to the 20th, 2019, to be Constitution Week within the Prior Lake Savage Area School District with the observance on September 17, 2019. I urge all citizens to join me in recognizing Constitution Week to reaffirm the ideals of the framers of the Constitution, the ideals the framers of the Constitution had in 1787. Um, I don't think this takes a vote, does it, Martha? No. no. Okay. There's no test either on this. No test. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, Board governance, um, 
at our work session, we went over the um, our board agenda, our working document. Um, basically, continuing our policy review, we'll be re reviewing our own policies of ourselves um, this fall. Um, we have a data review coming up in September. I believe it's our next work. It's our work yep. session, September 23rd. Um, Julie's reviewed the budget process. We'll continue having discussions on that. Um, we did a board self-evaluation, um, and I did not hear a lot of feedback afterwards, so I'm assuming that we're good with just doing another one next year and making the comparison, possibly bringing in um, someone to um, help us go over it. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe the Public Engagement Committee is continuing to meet and review um, some ideas for us. Mm -hmm. um, and to continue, continue with our self-governance and meetings <coughs> with um, the superintendent and getting out in the schools um, and being continuing to be visible um, in the schools. Um, does anyone have anything to add to that working document? Okay. Um, if not, do I have a motion to approve the document? So okay. moved by Michael, second by Stacy. Any comments or questions? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries 6 0. Uh, moving on to policy, um, these are the second and final readings of policies that were presented to us at the work session. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, as you said, in August, we uh, reviewed these policies for the first time. There were no cha recommended changes to uh, the first five policies listed there. We're just maintaining the same language um, from the Minnesota School Board Association. So there were no changes. We're recommending no changes to those policies. <coughs> and then in terms of policy 105, the retention of records, we're recommending that since it's required by law, uh, to have a retention um, or have a retention schedule, um, we don't need a board policy for that. MSBA does not have a model policy, uh, so our recommendation is simply to remove this policy. Can I make a motion? Um, do you want to make a motion all in one? Everyone, all right with that? Um, I'll take a motion for all the policies. Um, all right, so I'd make a motion um, to approve policy 101, 101.1, 102, 103. 104, and then remove um, policy 105. Okay, do I have a second? second. I have Jonathan. Any comments or questions? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries 6 0. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, well, we've heard a lot from the superintendent on her That's report. That's enough. Tonight. You don't need to hear so any more from me. <laughs> we'll move on to administrative reports. Are there any? <laughs> okay. Um, moving to board reports. Um, Michael? Did you have anything to add? We can start at the other end if you want. <laughs> um, I do have a few things to add tonight. Um, uh, the two committees that I serve on, uh, first community education, I am happy to report that for spring summer session, our adult participation was up 98%. So a lot of credit to that team, especially Jenny, who's been working really hard to um, increase that attendance. And overall for community ed, they're struggling like a lot of organizations with competing for leisure time activity, um, <coughs> both time and dollars. And so that's a, they're continually trying to innovate and see how to work with that. I would like to say, in case anybody is listening and interested, they are looking for more advisory board members. They meet once a month at noon. Um, it's a fairly regular commitment and a great way to learn more about um, how the district works with the community and the opportunities. I just came from the Early Learning Advisory Committee and would like to report that um, they too are looking for recruits for their uh, advisory committee, um, ideally parents who have kids in early childhood or the preschool programs. Um, it's a wonderful group to be a part of as well. Um, and just to briefly report, they're doing a great job in terms of assessment, and I think they're going to be one of the real models in the district. Um, they're really on the leading edge of personalized learning and standards-based learning. It's just been really exciting to see how thorough um, they have been and how excited they are about it. Um, also, there's a, just really great to listen to how they're using the, the pyramid structure and, and to get a sense of everything we talk about at the board table with acronyms, how they're applying it. So um, looking at PBIS, MTSS, um, how they're working with their parents to really help create an environment both at home and in the district that helps these young learners and really fighting to um, 
live up to their mission to focus on inclusion and involve all learners. And so it's exciting and hopefully maybe down the road too we could get a report from them just to see how this is all coming together and how it ties into everything else that we're doing in the different um, grade levels, including PBIS. So just happy to report out on that. Um, had the pleasure to attend with Dr. Stallo several of the opening um, first day of schools at different schools. We were both at the high school and Bridges ALC. And just to reiterate um, how powerful that uh, ALC space was to see kids walking in for the first time and to see, I, I would love to be in their head and see how that feels compared to the spaces they were in previously. Um, so gratitude to everybody who has worked on that project so tirelessly. Also, um, a great chance for us, Dr. Stahl and I, to learn a little bit more about personalized learning there and how they're using their spaces in new ways and uh, carefully navigating, transitioning from you know our, our typical six period day to one that really allows for some more flexible learning spaces. And the example they'll set there, I think it'll become somewhat of a national model is my guess. <coughs> um, and then first day, uh, we got to several elementary schools and I just wanted to report out again, this was a great opportunity to see how some of the things we talk about in terms of strategic direction happen on a day-to-day -day basis on our facility with the students who we're here to serve. Um, there is no board report that we could have had that would have kind of captured sort of that energy and excitement. I know several of you have participated in those sort of visits. Um, we got to visit not only with students um, who are so excited, but we got to visit with teachers if they were between class periods and um, learn things like we talked to teachers who are partnering and they will, for example, two of them will specialize, or one of them will specialize in two subject areas Another one will take two other subject areas and then they'll switch their kids. And what's happening is they're becoming really expert in their air content areas and their standards-based teaching and accountability. And then they can master that and then change the kids. And again, use those same approaches. Just exciting to see how they're being creative and resourceful in um, helping us improve our student achievement and reduce the gap. Um, also, we got to see a few things um, implemented that we've been working on. I'm a little bit newer to the cultural responsiveness um, training, and I got to see uh, firsthand the call and response, I believe is what it's called, going on in a classroom, and that was kind of exciting for me because I recognized it from the training session, and I could see how teachers were taking um, the work that Dr. Holly is doing and implementing it in the classroom. Um, also, just want to call out in terms of fiscal responsibility, how great everybody was with not only utilizing the spaces in a responsible way, but their staff. On day one, people sort of readjusted who, who they were serving and where they were. So for example, in the lunchroom at Westwood where everything was new, um, they pulled in you know, support staff, admin staff, everybody was there to help the kids find their way. And um, what a joy to see not only the regular staff there, but to see principals um, both affirming sort of that excitement of first day, but also like getting down to the kids' levels because there were kids with trembling lower lips and tears. And as a mom, I'm seeing my own kids reflected. And those principals, it was more important that they take care of that student and build that relationship than acknowledge that the <coughs> superintendent was standing there or a board member was standing there. Just so that was really great just to see relationships matter as our theme is really taking place on all of the front lines. Um, again, I had made a note to call out our child nutrition staff. <coughs> Fabulous job. Everything I saw seemed seamless, but I'm sure they were exhausted. And um, not only the facility, but how they were helping those students make their way through. It was a remarkable thing to witness. Um, this will be my longest report ever, I promise. <laughs> um, I already talked about them bragging about the pizza and the windows. Um, and just a few other things to call out our relationships theme. For example, at Westwood and Edgewood, all the staff wore flower lays, so the kids knew who to go to if they had a question or were nervous. Who was their helper? Um, at JP, they had positivities, so they all had these positive messages on their shirts, and that's how the kids could kind of navigate to, <coughs> to getting um, help. Redtail had matching T-shirts on. So, um, and then again, just to 
talked to a variety of staff, including um, one of my best memories. We'll be talking to Vicki, the custodian at Westwood, and hearing how personally she took the responsibility of getting those spaces ready for our students so they could have the best first day possible. I know that was happening throughout our district. I know that leadership was promoting that sort of uh, commitment on their part, but just again, gratitude to everybody. It was incredible to be there and witness all of that. Jonathan? Don't think I want to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have as much to say. Uh, I did indeed uh, spend the morning with Dr. Stallo on first day of elementary um, opening. We started the day at uh, Hidden Oaks and saw all the new spaces again. Um, it was actually quite nice that when we got there, Sasha said good morning and then basically just uh, sent us on our way. Um, and so we were just kind of wandering the halls as the day was getting started. Um, lots of teachers waving us in, saying hello. Um, got to you know just observe for a moment or two or be introduced and, and say hi, kids. Um, the enthusiasm with, uh, with the spaces is obvious from everybody who's there, students, teachers alike. When we did our tour, a week prior, um, we spent some time talking to em Emily Albrecht, and she was just you know, <clears throat> unboxing. And it was just like, how are you going to be ready for kids? And of course, she said she'd be ready. And we stopped back, and she was um, just still uh, boundless energy and enthusiasm and excited. And her room looked perfect, right? It was just ready to go. Um, a new teacher um, stopped us in the hallway. Um, Mrs. Simmons, I don't even know what she teaches, but she's new to the district. Students, um, her children are new to the district. And she stopped and uh, complimented Dr. Stallo on the environment, on the culture, how happy she is to be here, how uh, warmly received her children had been in their first days um, at middle and high school, I think. I can't remember, but it was, um, it was, it was gratifying to have someone just stop and, and say those things and, and appreciate the efforts that, are, that have been putting in. Um, and spending uh, a few minutes watching the Greenwood kids all unload off the buses and make their way in, all the first day of school uh, outfits looking cute, the brand new backpacks, <laughs> um, and... Um, the warmth with which they are greeted by the staff. Um, the image that will stay with me is the young girl who was in first grade, who clearly um, was new to the school, seemed as though she likely had not had a chance to come to meet your teacher night because she was pretty apprehensive as she got off the bus and didn't really know where to go and what to do. Um, and Patrick was there kneeling down to say hello reassure her that she was going to be great and take her hand um, and help her find her room and her teacher. And it was, uh, it was everything first day of school is supposed to be for somebody who doesn't get to see it every year. So it was really nice. Stacy? Um, I, uh, a couple things. I, um, Dr. Stahl and I went to um, AMSD on Friday morning and then we had a chance to stop at Mincaps, which was nice because um, they had some kind of neat, uh, what was it, personality um, kind of discovery pr process that they were going through. So we kind of watched them go through that. So it was pretty fun to see. Um, it's like 180 kids or 200 kids. I, it's a lot of kids. There's a lot of people in that little area. So I was like, wow, we got to make this bigger. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> Good problem. Um, but yeah, that was that was some of um, what I had going on on Friday with Dr. Stallo. And then um, what I did wanted to kind of update the board a little bit on um, was at AMSD, uh, they do do this every year with um, Dr. Bill Morris goes out and does um, it does a, a, a thousand person um, random sample um, of just where how people are feeling about in in the state in regards to issues related to education, as well as other issues, um, as well in just kind of getting the lay of the land before the legislature actually comes into, um, 
comes into play later in the year. So to kind of give them an idea of where people where people are standing on issues. Um, it's pretty interesting. I gave I had Dr. Saul do copies for everybody. Um, but I just it's if you have you know time to kind of look at it, 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 it is a kind of a good indicator. I've been seeing Bill's presentations now for ten years. He's right on a lot of times when it comes into into the um, legislative and what's going to happen and what's going to fly and what's not going to fly. So it's interesting. A um, couple just highlights. The financial outlook is not as rosy at the state. Um, so everyone's kind of waiting to hear really what's going to happen. Um, it is a bonding year, obviously not a, um, a funding year So um, for the legislature. So a lot of the work done will be done around policy. Um, one other point that uh, we brought up as far as um, AMSD was Paula Forbes came in and I thought this was kind of important to talk about reimagine Minnesota. She's kind of been the representative um, for, has she been the representative for AMSD? Facilitated, Facilitated yeah, that process. That right. process. Um, and there's a, a, a really kind of cool thing that um, Dr. Salo actually put in her um, newsletter to everyone this week is that there's gonna be a student council um, where they're gonna bring 200 students from all over the state um, to really bring student voice to reimagine Minnesota, basically. It's, but it's gonna be a conference that's gonna happen October 21st. Um, and they're gonna send out toolkits in the next week or here or two um, to all superintendents of all the districts, but to really have students, it'd be a student-led, student voice about what they see in their schools, what they see for the future of their schools, and to really kind of give some voice to students as it relates, because this is all relating to the, um, what am I trying to say? The trial, uh, the, um, Cruz Guzman. Yeah, Cruz Guzman um, lawsuit that's currently right now in mediation. So this is some of the stuff that's coming out of um, mediation as to what needs to be done. And so Judge Alexander is actually the judge that's um, running the mediation and running, running that case. Um, where that case, and I thought this was kind of important to hear about too, the trial's been postponed right now currently to late 2020 to early 21, 2021. Um, there's been really good discussion happening at mediation, and they really see four issues um, that need to be addressed. And um, the, those issues are what does integration today look like and in the future? What does choice for schools look like today and in the future? What does um, a culturally affirming environment look like um, for students? And then what does achievement look like for today and for the future? And so there's a pretty positive feeling about what's happening. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that um, Reimagine Minnesota and the nine directives are coming from you know, the leaders of education in the state. And so they're really feeling like this is hopefully gonna get resolved in mediation. I mean, that's what they're saying right now. So, and I do, I do think that that's, you know, it's leaning positively towards that way. So I just wanted to kind of give the board an update on that and then um, to kind of give you an idea of Bill Morris's, he's got some pretty, pretty fun facts. So this is based on um, 1,000 people, 100 of the subsample were out of St. Cloud, 100 of the subsample were out of uh, Rochester because those are AMSD districts and then the remaining were the Metro AMSD districts um, that were randomly called in between like September 3rd, September 7th. So it's really fresh information. Um, just kind of saying some things like, hey, how are your household finances? What's important for, you know, coming up um, for state funding? And education is number one, <coughs> from what I recall in here. Um, so that is a good thing. Um, so it is on people's minds. Um, and then lastly, um, MSBA was looking for... Um, a delegate for their assembly, for the legislative assembly, and so I threw my name in the hat and I'm in it. You know Thank how you. that happens. Thank you. Thank you. That was, I don't think I ran against anyone. <laughs> it's kind of how Doesn't that matter. Happens. Thanks for being there. <laughs> Thanks for doing it. So I'll be uh, part of that this fall, uh, just kind of helping form MSBA's legislative platform with other school board. You know, it'll be interesting to see other school boards and, and what, what they're talking about, what their issues are. So it'll be interesting. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we have a number of facilities meetings um, since we last met, but most of that's been reviewed tonight. But I do have to echo that I'm absolutely amazed that everything looks the way it does now compared to a week before, not even a week before we started school. That was, I was kind of a 
a naysayer, how can this all happen? But um, <laughs> it did, it was awesome. Um, also, we had the kickoff um, that Dr. Stala led, and it was exceptional. Um, once again, so much energy in the auditorium, packed auditorium, actually. Um, it's really fun to, to see all the, all the new staff and old staff coming back, uh, or experienced staff, I guess. Um, and we have a new face at our board um, this evening that hopefully will stay with us through the course of the year. Um, it's Isabella, and I have to apologize, I don't know your last name. Belzer. 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 Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you. Um, and not to put you on the spot, but if you have anything to report, we'd love to hear from you. I do. Well, thank you. Um, so as you know, the school year has kicked off very well. Um, and to kind of follow the overarching theme that I'm hearing here, I would like to also note on the construction and talk about how uh, from the student perspective, a lot of the students are dealing with it very well. Um, and although uh, I know some of the uh, parking lot has been a headache for some of the people, I know that they have also been adapting to it and parking up in the upper lot. Um, and that has been going very smoothly, as well as it's exciting to see um, the new additions onto the ends of the classrooms um, and what future students will be able to see and uh, what they'll get to experience. And also the new Laker Cafe will be exciting for a majority of the school as well. And um, so that's uh, been a great treat to see as the uh, school year has started up. Um, in student council, we've been kind of kicking off our homecoming, homecoming uh, planning. And we've been doing that uh, ever since the summer. We've started having meetings all the way back in July. And we've been working towards kind of making it a little easier for students uh, to find out information on this. And um, the exec board has been working very hard on uh, kind of revamping our, our like policies and what we do as a student council and trying to kind of spread our message and um, not only with in our council, but within the rest of the school. Um, and something that's kind of been exciting is that our communication with administration has been going amazingly. I've been asking, um, uh, this year for uh, our chairs to CC me into some of the emails and I'm seeing all of their uh, professionalism in the emails and it's very exciting to see this growing and all these growing student leaders. Um, along with homecoming, we've also, uh, we'll be volunteering at the Fall Community Fest next week so we are excited to do that. It'll be our second year helping out at that. Um, and other than that, uh, the football games have been tremendous and they've been a really huge <laughs> show of school spirit even throughout um, the construction and every everything is going very well with high school so thank you Terry? Uh, well uh, like other people have said I am amazed at um, that everything came together I'm uh, further overjoyed and amazed that the new cafeterias with their first formal meal that was actually distributed um, at the middle school in particular, as well as Edgewood Westwood, uh, went over, uh, from what I can tell, seamlessly. Um, that is a testament to the hard work and also the scary prospect of putting that together for that many kids all at once without a good couple of days of practice. Um, that, was, that was amazing, and I, and I commend everybody on that. Um, a couple of updates. I did go to an elementary school during the first day of school, actually, um, during assessment and then the regular school. And um, I will say that the assessment days, it, particularly at the elementary level, just made the uh, first day of school that much easier for those kids in the transition. Um, and they loved it. They loved getting together and doing the reading and everything like that. So that was very, very uh, good to see. And the way it all came together was also incredibly impressive. Um, as far as updates, I wanted to put on record about the harvest table plate on uh, the 22nd to help uh, kids with food insecurity. And I believe a lot of the food is coming from uh, the Prior Lake Savage area gardens from the various elementary schools and from the middle schools. So that's uh, also very impressive. And I hope that everyone comes to support uh, our food program as well as the general uh, program for kids with food uh, uh, security issues. Um, on the other note, I'm very I'm looking forward to and I've already touched base with the MNCAPS program, so I'm very excited about this year, and uh, I know that each year that program gets better and better, so I'm very much looking forward to that. I uh, just wish there was better parking for those kids to go back and forth uh, to MNCAPS, so 
hopefully that will get resolved and the rain will stop. Otherwise, I think we're going to have to build an arc. Uh -huh. um, I did, over the summer, uh, attend the STEM conference for all schools uh, to see the um, Minneapolis and the various districts uh, STEAM programs take off. As well as, an, uh, as well as the state um, standards from the MDE on the STEM standards. And then I uh, also note that the MDE is looking for a uh, computer specialist and an opening for STEM at the state. So hopefully we'll have actual STEM standards in the next couple of years. Uh, also, um, I participated in the MCA standards and the rulemaking for the K through 12 academic standards for science and math. Um, I did participate in those programs as well as uh, participate in the, um, in the uh, July 29th uh, final for the request for comments or the RFCs and then the updates after that. Um, and then um, I'm just uh, looking forward to homecoming this year uh, <laughs> and everything else that we have in store. So thank you. All right. Like many of you, I attended several of the uh, back-to-school nights, uh, high school, middle school, and elementary levels, <laughs> probably because I have kids at every single one of those. Um, but I wanted to be there. I would have been there anyways. Um, but it was a lot of fun seeing all the excitement and just kind of hanging back and watching them uh, almost like Halloween all over again as they have their list of you know, which houses they want to go to. They have their list of teachers they want to go see and seek out. And you see that genuine excitement on both sides. Uh, you know, when we talk about building relationships and how relationships matter, it's not just who's my teacher this year. I want to see my teacher last year and the year before. And I want to, even though I may not get along with my younger sibling, I'm going to go to her school too. And I'm going to see all of my favorite teachers over there too in that neighborhood. And we only wish... We had one still at Five Hawks so that we could go visit Mr. Bell. Because <laughs> those older ones had Mr. Bell and absolutely love that. So, uh, Come anytime. Oh, they will. They will. Um, this year uh, we had iPads distributed at the middle school level. Well, it happens every year. But it was just fun to sit back and watch all of this unfold with the uh, the teenagers who are providing the support for that activity and just how seamless and organized they were. Got to talk to some of the parents and some of the different students who uh, were getting their very first iPad, and uh, it was just neat, seamless. They were overjoyed and just had nothing but praise. Uh, quick and easy. Um, that's enough about schools, I think, for tonight. Uh, Special Education Advisory Council. Uh, we have not met in a few months. One of the reasons is that we need additional parent volunteers to come and participate. Uh, we don't have that many who are able to attend either for uh, scheduling or, uh, or other needs. So we're looking at what can we do differently to attract more parents to be able to participate. Do we need to adjust the scheduling so that it's during the daytime or evenings or different days of the week? So I anticipate that there will be a survey monkey or something like that going out um, to just <coughs> solicit that input so that we can make the necessary adjustments and move forward with, the, with parents and other community members who have a vested interest in special education like I do. All right. Okay, well, I think we've got a good start with board involvement since it was a half hour board report <laughs> tonight. <laughs> um, hopefully those will be a little more succinct next time, but great, great, great information. Thank you. Um, future events. Um, succinct. <laughs> what does that word mean? <laughs> future events, Fall Community Fest, September 16th. That's at the high school from 6 to 8.30. Um, Constitution Day, uh, September 17th. Board study session and data review, um, September 23rd here at the DSC at 6 p.m. Um, board scholar night is October 7th um, at the high school at 7 o'clock. And also um, there's going to be an, uh, a viewing and airing of um, the Lucy, Lucy Laney Love school. them first, yeah. Um, love them first. Um, and that's going to be up at the high school on September 12th at 8 p.m. Um, any of you are welcome to come. 
Um, it will also be on Channel 11, I believe, at that same, same time. time at home. So if you can't come, try and tune in to watch it. It's um, We were had the opportunity to, to watch it um, during the MSBA summer conference, and um, it's very moving, um, very eye-opening. Um, it's, it's, it's well worth your time to watch. So, um, And with that, I will take a motion to adjourn um, the open meeting because we'll be going into a closed meeting. So do I have a motion to adjourn? By Enrique? Yes. Yeah. Second? Second. By Mary? Um, any other comments? Um, Mary? You had mentioned at the study session the community conversation on race. Did you want to make sure that gets on record here? Or? That'd be great. Um, I believe it's September 26th. The City of Savage uh, is sponsoring, I think their police department is sponsoring, thank you, Mary, for reminding me, um, a community conversation on race and inviting all uh, folks to attend. I don't have that. Is it a 6 o'clock or a 7 o'clock start? Does 6.30 anybody? I have. 6.30, yeah. and the location is the McCall yeah, Pond McCall Environmental, Pond Environmental Center. Learning Center. So thank you. Yeah, it would be wonderful to have folks engage in that conversation. What's going on? Um, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. We are adjourned and going to be closed. <laughs>